I'm John a. Buchanan, and in this episode, what we're going to do is to explore Logic's remarkable DSer plugin. DSing allows us to create frequency sensitive dynamic control. I'm taking my time over saying those words carefully. In other words, what we effectively have a chance to do is to control the dynamics, the volume in other words, of a frequency specific area. And DSs are particularly great on vocal tracks, allowing us to get rid of S sounds or sibilant sounds as we refer to them, which sometimes just become a bit overwhelming, particularly when we add other effects like compression or reverb. Before we get into all of that, I'm gonna play you this vocal, which at the moment has got some EQ on it, it's got a little bit of compression on it, and it's got a Space Designer uh, reverb providing a bit of plate reverb. Here is how the vocal sounds at the moment. You're not the same person when we're together. You're not the light and the dark I remember. All that we are is becoming a memory. Shadows that dance in the night overcome me Okay, now what we're gonna do is to focus on this section of the song where, in this kind of pre chorusy section, what we do is to get into a section of the vocals which contain quite a lot of S sounds. Let's just listen to it again. And when I see you, I don't know you. And when I touch you, I can reach you. Okay, so in those four lines alone, we can hear a lot of that kind of S sound. Now, that's sort of fine, but what frequencies like these S sounds tend to do is to feel quite harsh. And often what happens is that they directly fight something that we usually kind of want to do to the brightness of vocals within our tracks. So often when it comes to EQing vocals, if they've been recorded nicely, is that what we want in a track like this is to open up the air and the brightness and the fizz and the wonder and the magic. And often what that means is that what we want to do, as I'm sure I have done on this vocal, sure enough, is to give a little uplift to the upper frequency content. So towards the top end where all of the air is, what we want is to feel this kind of excitement. The only problem with that is that we suddenly potentially make sounds brighter. And in doing that, we shine a light on the S sounds, the sibilant sounds, which otherwise overwhelm the mix. So what we want to do is to find a way of being able to control the volume of those S sounds without affecting the overall EQ. Now, the next thing to consider is that sometimes a sibilant sound might produce a little bit of a problem, but the next sibilant sound, which is maybe even louder, creates even more of a problem. So a regular EQ is okay, but what it's gonna do is to take the frequency area that we want to be attenuating or dropping the volume of and drop it by a fixed amount. Let's say three decibels. Well, that's gonna sound fine for the bits of sibilance that are only three dB too loud, but for the bits of sibilance that are louder than that, they're not gonna do a job. What we want is a dynamics control that is going to be responsive. When there's a big problem to fix, the DSer can fix that sound properly. And when there's a less big problem to fix, it's going to apply less attenuation. So let's have a look at the parameters within the DSer. I've got it lined up here, but so far it's been bypassed. Let's open up the parameters and let's turn it on. So effectively what a DSer firstly allows us to do is actually to work in one of two different modes. We can work in what's called relative mode or absolute mode. And what happens in absolute mode is that effectively what we're going to see when I press play is the volume of a specific group of frequencies, I'll come back to that in a moment, represented as a line. So in other words, when there is no frequency content playing, that line's gonna be very low. And when that frequency area gets louder, we're going to see more of it. 
What is that frequency area? Well, at the moment, it's set at around seven kilohertz. This is effectively the default area where the de is gonna start going to work on a particular part of the frequency spectrum to allow us to get our sibilance under control. So that's one way that we can work in what's referred to as absolute mode. Whereas in relative mode, what we're going to see is that all of the frequency area that falls underneath, in other words, doesn't have a sibilance problem, is gonna be represented as a sort of downwards blue line. And anything which is detected as sibilance is gonna appear as a yellow line above this particular point. And this point is, our threshold level. So effectively, we can decide where we want to be introducing the volume attenuation of our sibilance. Does that make sense? So in other words, if I want less sibilance control, I will turn the threshold up. And if I want to be really getting sibilance under control a lot, I will drop threshold some more. Okay, so effectively, that's what this dial does. And our frequency dial selects the frequency area where we want to be applying that change. What we've then got is max reduction. And what this does is to allow us to determine the maximum possible volume we're going to take out of our signal if a big sibilant problem is detected, up to 20 dB of volume. So again, I'm in a position to control that. If that seems too extreme, I can change that here. Down at the bottom, we've got some other controls too. What I have a, uh, an option to do is either to apply filtering, remember effectively we're focusing in on a particular frequency, and I can either do that with this kind of bell curve effectively saying, okay, around just this group of frequencies, I'm going to be applying this de-essing. Or what I can do is to apply it across a broader range of upper frequency content. That's what those two uh, buttons do. And effectively, what I've also got a chance to do is in a kind of flipped way to choose between whether or not that range is a narrow band or a slightly wider one. And the last button here, just to really complete this, belt and braces mode now, is an opportunity for me to solo listen to just the frequencies that are being attenuated, just the problem frequencies. Okay, that's a slightly dry tour of all of the parameters. Let's put them to work. So I am gonna select relative mode, so that we have a chance to see all of the undetected content below and the yellow affected content above. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to find our threshold point, something that seems natural and musical. We're gonna set reduction amounts and we're gonna see whether or not seven kilohertz is around the frequency area we do want to be attenuating. So I'm gonna just remind you what this sounds like with no DSing because it's so much chat. And then we'll punch it in and see how it sounds. Now we're gonna just focus on these four bars because this word see, when I see you, is one particularly sibilant moment, which I'm keen to sort of shine a bit of a light on. Let's just have a listen now with the DSing applied. When I see you, I don't know you. Okay, so what we're seeing now is every time we hear the word C or touch, where we've got the kind of CH sound, which is also a bit sibilant, we're basically seeing that that signal is being detected as a sibilance problem. That's what happens when this line goes yellow. What then happens based on the threshold point is that reduction is applied. And at the moment, that reduction is up to 20 decibels, which is an awful lot. And in my opinion, is now ducking far too much. It sounds much less natural than it did before. Listen again. When see you I don't know you when I touch you I can't reach you when I see you I don't know you when I touch you so it's doing a job we're getting rid of the sibilance but it sounds much less natural so how could we fix that well there are two ways firstly we can increase the threshold point so that less signal is detected and what we can also do is to change the amount of reduction so that rather than taking up to 20 dB of volume out of the signal, we're only taking up to six, and that's gonna produce a much less radical result. When I see you, I don't know you. And 
that sounds much more musical. Now, just to really shine a light on this, what I'm going to do is to solo the vocal. And what I'm also going to do is to solo the band that we're talking about. Now, remember, at the moment, I'm using this kind of bell curve, which means that we are listening to frequencies inside a particular frequency area. In other words, I don't know exactly how wide this band is because I don't get a bandwidth control. But I do know that the center frequency is 7 kilohertz and that effectively frequencies a certain amount either side of seven kilohertz are no longer affected at all. So low frequency content not being attenuated. Frequency content above a certain amount above 7K is also not being attenuated either. But what we have a chance to do is to actually find whether or not this default value of seven kilohertz is around the right frequency. Now, what I mean by that is that not everybody's S sounds are at the same frequency. Some people have got very resonant, really high frequency S sounds, and other people's are a bit lower and a bit more like this kind of frequency. It's nice to do different white noises. Sorry, but it's just fun. And effectively, different singers have different sibilant areas. So whilst it's great that Logic's put us in this kind of 7K range, it might not be where my singer is sibilant. Let's have a listen. When I see you, I don't know you and when I touch you I can't reach you and when I see you I don't know you and when I touch you I can't reach you and when I see you I don't know you and when I touch you I can't reach you and when I see you I don't know you and when I touch you I can't reach you and when I see you I don't know you, and when I touch you, I can't reach you, and when I see you, I don't know you, and when I touch you, I can't reach you. So that's really interesting. So effectively, what we have a chance to do is to recognize that sibilance presents itself in different frequency bands. So there's a big difference between when I see you and then the kind of resonant touch you at the end of that particular word. And so we've got a bit of a decision to make. Which one of those two things are we going after? Now, to my ears, the touch and the kind of resonance of that is a bit more extreme. And yet at the same time, I don't want to be compromising on the kind of musicality of it. So again, no fixed answer, no right way to do this. But I guess if what I wanted to do was to attack both of those problems, I might switch out of a bell mode and instead use this high frequency mode, which is effectively saying, or this high shelf mode, I should say, which is saying, okay, well, above a certain point, I'm going to be attenuating frequency content, all of which I see as a problem. The I in that context is logic. I'm speaking as logic now. Effectively, I feel like I've earned the right to do that. I'm going to just say it. So effectively, above a certain frequency, what we're doing is we're basically sort of saying, OK, well, all frequency content is going to be attenuated as opposed to just a fixed band width amount around a certain frequency. Let's hear that as well. Okay, I'm going to come out of filter solo mode. I want to hear how that sounds in context. When I see you, I don't know you. And when I touch you, I can't reach you. And when I see you, I don't know you. And when I touch you, I can't reach you. And when I see you, I don't know you. And when I touch you, I can't reach you. And when I see you, I don't know. I think it's sounding a little bit more natural. This is one of those processes, however, where our ear is drawn to the ultra shiny top end because that's the thing that we're trying to attenuate and go after a little bit. And so objectivity is really easily lost. I guarantee you, if you're working with a DSer, that the settings that make sense at five o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon will make a lot less sense on a Wednesday morning first thing. So be ready to make those adjustments. But I am going to press play and listen all the way through and just see how our DSer is sounding with these settings through the verse and that kind of pre-chorus section. You're not the same person when we're together. You're not the light and the dark I remember. All 
Some parts feel like they're working really nicely, other parts feel too extreme, other parts don't feel extreme enough. Now it's worth really bearing in mind that if we really wanted to go to town on this, and we do I think, or we certainly would if we were mixing this track for real, this is definitely a parameter that I would consider automating. This is an opportunity to basically say, okay, well, the amount of reduction that I'm going to apply is going to be different for different sections of the song. So the word shadows in the first verse felt like it was really unnaturally clipped from a volume perspective, but actually some of this is working really nicely on the section that we targeted. So hopefully in terms of the parameters that are available to you within the DSer, this all now makes a little bit more sense and you can see how musically it can be applied. But definitely if you're working with vocals and the S sounds are starting to make you close one eye and feel a little bit like you're having root canal surgery, the DSer is going to be your friend. It's going to be an opportunity to dynamically go after just the frequencies that are problematic and get them under control, leaving all of the other frequency content alone. Really useful. 